The Lagos City investment case is Yvonne Mungo. She's an economist at Renaissance Capital. And then our Lagos uh, studio uh, hosts Ben Akubweze, who's Lagos State Commissioner for uh, Economic Planning and Budget as well. Let's get straight into this conversation about financing, uh, Ben, because you're not immune to the socioeconomic challenges that we're facing globally. To what extent has current the current economic environment come to bear on your budget? Because uh, as you say, you need $50 billion over 10 years in terms of investment. And what you've seen in five years is uh, $15 billion. So that leaves you with quite a bit of a deficit. Absolutely. And um, um, there is, yes, a funding you know, you know, challenge. In 2009, to support our um, infrastructure investment program, we launched um, a multi, you know, multi-tranche bond issuance uh, program uh, it, 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 to an aggregate of 275 you know, billion you know, naira. There have been three tranches. Uh, the first was uh, 50 billion naira, then there was 57 and a half billion naira, then there was 80 billion naira you know, last year, and right now we're processing uh, you know, uh, papers, uh, you know, necessary applications to come back uh, to the market for a significant um, offering, you know, under that uh, program again, you know, this, you know, this year. But I mean, hey, all of that is still under two billion, uh, you know, you know, dollars. So it's still long, a long, uh, you know, a long way. We need the right type of, you know, financing. There's financing available, but it's got to be the right type for infrastructure, um, you know, investment. It's got the, the in terms of tenor and um, you know, pricing because these these investments take some. I'm also to you know to uh, you know mature and 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 begin to then create the cash flows yeah. that may be needed to service the debt and and that s structure of financing is is um, at a deficit in terms of supply um, here. Uh, but, but Again, talking about power, just speaking up the comments that uh, you made about, uh, we see this as a major, you know, opportunity area for uh, any investors. B you know, the, the 11 distribution of the 11 distribution companies prior to uh, the public companies prior to privatization, the two distribution companies in Lagos accounted for about 50% of the uh, public power companies, um, you know, revenues. Um, you know, Lagos gets delivered from the national grid now, maybe on average about a thousand megawatts of power. We reckon that we need a minimum of 10,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. our, our projection out over that 10-year, uh, you know, plan period to 2016 was that, you know, by 2016 to see about 15,000 megawatts of power here to be able to address yeah. the power needs. Of, of the city. So you see the huge gap there. The demand is here. The ability to pay um, you know, is here. Lagos State, as you observed earlier, is also geographically speaking, the, you, know, the, you know, the smallest. So, you know, you've got a limited geographical area that, over which you have that concentration of, you know, concentrated market uh, and therefore, you know, deploying infrastructure should be like power so that should be you know relatively Ben I'm easier. going to interject and, at and, this and point because uh, Yvonne has a question yes. from you from our end here in Johannesburg Yvonne Hi Ben I have a question regarding yes. the earlier point on the financing my experience at least looking at the federal budget yes. has been that the financing is not n uh, always necessary an issue the resources uh, do tend to be there I think some of the challenges has been the actual implementation of the budget the capacity to implement the capex budget in particular if I look at the federal budget only 50 percent of that is actually implemented in any given year is that the same for the Lagos state budget what's your experience there no. no, it's not the same. In, in Lagos State, we, I mean, we've demonstrated a clear, you know, execution capacity, and everyone can, you know, here can testify, you know, to that. Our, our singular constraint, is, you know, is, you know, the, you know, you know, the resources. Last year, for instance, 2012, we executed 90 percent of our, you know, capital budget. You know, so we we don't face. Uh, that sort of challenge. You're right about you know that being a challenge 
uh, you know, at the federal level and some other governments. Well, uh, if that's the opportunity that's being put on the table and if uh, that's uh, the kind of commitment we have in terms of implementation as well, Yvonne, you've got to ask the question, what then is keeping investors at bay? I think investors are interested. I just think they want to see a little bit more uh, happening. Uh, we've already mentioned the power side and we've seen private investors come to the party, the likes of General Electric. I think the fact that uh, under the Power Africa plan that uh, President Obama announced mm -hmm. when he was here, uh, Nigeria is one of the countries that's being considered f uh, for that, suggests that uh, the, uh, these private investors and development partners are willing to participate in the story. I think most of what you see, and this is not just a Nigeria issue, is that uh, private sector would like to see the government do more before they do participate. Because it's an issue of trust at the end of the day. True, at that, but then you also just want the infrastructure in place to make it conducive for you to do business. So let's take a look at these uh, funding models here because for now we've got a lot of these infrastructure projects financed via the African taxpayer and consumer and it's not proving to be a very sustainable model. So PPP is being turned to a little bit more aggressively. Is this the only fundament, uh, uh, funding model that's going to work at the end of the day because it's certainly being put forward as the silver bullet? Well, there's enormous potential and there's upside for that. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of, uh, not just Nigeria, but a lot of African countries seeking to uh, work around the regulation and legislation around that because there's a lot of upside. Today, on average, if you look at Sub-Sahara, about 60% of the funding requirement for infrastructure is coming from the public sector, from mm -hmm. the government. Um, what's been growing more significantly in recent years is uh, the funding from non-OECD financiers, and China is probably the biggest there. Not necessarily in the case of Nigeria, they're bigger in other parts of the continent, like Angola. But they are um, an, a, a growing and a bigger player in terms of the infrastructure story. Um, places like Ethiopia, for instance, where they're building the Renaissance Dam that will produce uh, significant power for that particular region. So you are seeing um, increasing options. Nigeria is fortunate to be one of the African countries that has access to international financial markets. We saw the federal government mm -hmm. now is seeking or... Um, they're issuing another euro bond, so there is upside there in terms of uh, seeking international financing for infrastructure projects domestically. Domestically, So there are several options, and Nigeria is fortunate to be one of the countries that can explore those options, and PPP, of course, having great upside. So you're starting to, Ben, explore the options when it comes to uh, funding models here. Let's take a look at opportunity as well, because uh, to a large extent, we focus on the greenfield opportunities. Uh, what about the brownfield opportunities and regeneration projects? Is enough of a focus being directed that way? Uh, ben, uh, w when it comes to um, funding models, it seems that there's a lot of focus on uh, exploring different kinds of opportunities to leverage off. What about uh, projects, uh, project diversification itself? We focused on the greenfield projects, brownfield projects. Are, is enough of a focus being directed towards regeneration projects? We are not just looking at greenfield projects, we're also I mean, looking at brownfields, we're you know re reviving you know some projects that uh, totering on verge of uh, you know collapse. We are renewing. We're not just developing new infrastructure. We're renewing existing infrastructure. In some cases, we've you know been able to turn existing infrastructure over to the private sector that has then gone in and made the investment and brought in you know, manage uh, capacity. But something that I really want to jump in and say here is I, I think, you know, investors and financiers alike, you know, have to basically take another look at, at how they engage with sub-nationals. Okay, if you take, you know, Lagos State, I mean, we are a sub-national government. And so oftentimes they've got to work through the, you know, the national government and then, you know, uh, people, investors and financiers tend to be more conversant with working with, you know, national governments mm -hmm. in terms of the structures that they put uh, on the table. But if you take a Lagos state, for instance, if Lagos were a country by itself, mm -hmm. in size, Lagos will be up there among African countries. In terms of the size of the economy, it will be sitting comfortably within the top 10 economies on the continent. But, you know, because it's sub-national, you know, it's not quite seen, you know, from that perspective. As, as, as a state, we rely on federal transfers for just 25% of our revenues. We generate our revenues, you know, 75% you know, of our revenues internally 
from local taxes and, 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 and other service you know, charges. And, and yet, you know, when you know, the structures that they typically will put on the table will require, or oh, we want sovereign guarantee, we want approval of the uh, sovereign government to deal with you and, 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 and stuff like that, and which, based on the, the federal constitution of Nigeria, isn't uh, necessarily um, you know, required. The state has, you know, to some significant extent, you know, uh, capacity to manage its finances independently. And we need to then just get more creative in, in yeah. terms Are of Are you happy with the kind of creativity that's coming through from Lagos State itself? And do you concur with the kind of comments that, uh, that Ben's put on the table? It's, it's a good point, particularly the fact that um, investors need to engage more of sub-national governments. is rightly said that Lagos State stands right up there if you're to equate it with uh, other eco uh, state economies uh, or national governments, national economies, as I should mm -hmm. say, in sub-Sahara. It's, uh, it's, it's a significant player on the continent. So if you look at it that way, then that should inspire more confidence. In terms of uh, how it stands within Nigeria, it is definitely a leader in terms of its positioning, in terms of... Um, um, as, as an investment destination, let's put it that way. So uh, from, from what we're hearing, they do have the right um, plans or agenda going mm -hmm. forward. It's the implementation. As mentioned, and he's mentioned the challenges as well. We're working with um, a highly um, de densely populated state. Uh, which has been where there's been underinvestment for yeah. several years. So the uh, challenges are significant, but opportunities are also there. Well, let's